Hey, rock stars, Lid Shaw, and I'm coming to you from Virtual NAM 2021. And I'm here joined with Martin Seidel at Austrian Audio. How are you doing, Martin? I'm very well. How are you, Ian? I'm doing great. Um, thanks, everybody, for joining us. Uh, this is, you know, it's an it's an unusual year here. Normally, I'd be at the booth with you, Martin, and we'd yeah. be just talking to you right at NAM on a busy floor. But today we're doing it over a Zoom call. So I thought it would be a really cool way to see what's going on with you guys at Austrian Audio and introduce the rock stars who are, that's my audience here at Recording Studio Rock Stars, to um, your incredible microphones and find out more about you. Cool. Well, thank you very much for the invitation. And I'm, I'm sure we can rock the, the booth now, uh, the virtual booth. <laughs> <laughs> nice, man. Let's do it. Let's rock the booth. So tell us a little bit about, um, you know, who, who are you? Who, what is Austrian audio? Um, my brief understanding is that you come from a, a long history of making microphones and, um, and you have started something new. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, Basically, I always refer to Austrian Audio being, uh, you know, the first startup company with more than 350 years in experience in what we're doing. So, uh, and I know that contradicts itself, but I think, uh, you know, if you are in the audio industry, you, you know that uh, there's a long history of microphones and headphones coming out of Vienna. Uh, Vienna, A, being a very cultural city of music, and B, of course, there's a history of a microphone maker that was in the market for more than 70 years. And as things go, you know, um, they have traveled on towards a bigger corporation and the whole corporation was sold to another Korean corporation. And so basically it was 2017 when uh, all the, the headquarter and all the R&D departments, all the product management uh, of this company, it has three letters. I'm not saying more. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's name it. It was AKG. Let's just, yeah, uh, it was. AKG uh, Acoustics, it was closed in 2017 here in Vienna. And uh, in one go, I mean, all the people were uh, on the street. Uh, so nobody was taken on. And uh, I was 16 years with the Harman Group. And, and so I, eight years with JBL Professional in California and eight years with, with AKG. So basically when that happened, uh, you know, I thought, uh, it would be a waste, uh, you know, of, of experience to let that team fall apart because, you know, it's, it's, it's easy to hire a great head, uh, a new acoustician or a mechanical engineer, but that's a team that interlinks, you know, with all the problems that may appear in, in developing, inventing new stuff in a microphone business because it's very specific. Yeah. It's completely different to a electronic a mixing desk or even loudspeaker development. It's, it's, it's a very specific discipline. So, uh, you know, I ran on and, and, and tried to find me a partner, uh, at least one, to also finance a, a such an operation, which uh, uh, I successfully did uh, late 2016 because it was already clear at that time that the closure would happen. And, uh, yeah, we regrouped uh, at that time with 22 and now 45 uh, employees, of which uh, uh, 38 are former uh, employees of that microphone company. So all the core development team is here. That's very cool. So again, just to briefly sum it up, you spent a lot of time with AKG. They that There was a big transition, and then you decided to start Austrian Audio to bring along all this incredible expertise of yeah. building microphones to keep the tradition alive in a new setting. Exactly. And, and, you know, there is so much knowledge in here and there's so much history and legacy in here uh, that we thought, OK, where do you start if you want to do a boutique manufacturing, handcrafting, high end microphone company? You definitely have to start with the heart of it. Where does it all start? It all starts with a capsule. So even before we even thought of uh, what kind of microphones are we going to put into the market, we thought, what's missing, what has changed, what is desired of this heritage sound of this, uh, let's name it the old CK12 capsule, you know, it was in the legendary microphones. And, and this capsule was changed over the years due to production processes uh, and probably also costs. And, uh, and we thought, you know, we need to get back to where that was, where this heritage sound comes, this smooth height uh, without getting harsh or sharp. And, and then, so we took really a year, more than a year, to redesign, redevelop uh, a capsule, a large condenser capsule, uh, uh, before we even started to do a product. And, and we are very proud, to be honest, because this, this CKR12 capsule, which is the Austrian audio capsule, 
uh, by now has a really great reputation and and is uh, you know several times awarded. It's even nominated for a tech award, the the latest microphone, and uh, and you know and, and it, apart from that, it really it really looks gorgeous if you look at that. You know, it's a it's a capsule, and I can show you to the camera. I hope. Oh, that's cool. Hey, I can uh, almost see my reflection in it. <laughs> well, you know, the, the membrane, of course, is gold spotted uh, mile, very thin. But what the really new thing on that is the black thing around there is made of ceramic. Uh, oh, wow. It's never done before. This is a patent on Austrian audio. And the big nice thing on that is you get uh, the specific weight of the old brass capsules. And that was part of this great sound. Uh, the later models were, were made of plastic and you didn't have that specific weight. But we have the benefit now of a reproduction, uh, easier production uh, that, uh, you know, we can basically, basically warrant that uh, each of the microphones, microphones sound the same and, and come out of the, of the production line with plus minus half a dB in deviation only. So that's more or less matched pairs for each microphone. So, so, so tell us a little bit, Martin, what, what, uh, show us the capsule again. Explain yep. a little bit what a capsule is. So, so for, for our audience, the rock stars, you know, we know that there are dynamic mics and condenser mics, but we don't always understand what it, what it is that makes up something like that. So that has plates on it that get, that get power, and that's part of how the sound is created. But then you also have this incredible um, center section where there are holes drilled in it and everything, right? Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah, you can see the holes a little bit, I think, if I hold it like that. Yeah. That's the electrodes. You know the electrodes. That's the that's the, the the brass in the middle, and that needs to be extremely plain. You know we're talking here plus minus micrometer, right? Yeah. Uh, they always have the same distance from the membrane to the electrode. That's a very important thing. So the production on that is is very sophisticated only on the electrodes, and then uh, our capsule is a side contact capsule. So the contacts are here on the side of the microphone, not yeah. in the center, as one of the other major uh, manufacturers do in the in the recording industry so now, i imagine if it's if it's on the side that means the capsule is like a diaphragm if you think about it like a drum head and you imagine if you want that drum head to to resonate perfectly you know if you if you put your hand on the drum it would stop it you know it's like it changes the way it resonates right it does uh but there's certainly the other ways is is, is feasible as well what what you know what What's the difficult part of that is that uh, a membrane should move like a piston. Right. It shouldn't wobble. You shouldn't move more in the middle than on the side. Interesting. Because you have different uh, uh, capturing on, on each part of the, of the membrane or of the capsule, which is not what you want. So basically, you have to, to make the material uh, in a way that you get the movement of the whole membrane from the side to the center as parallel as possible. Uh, and in this case, uh, we have a, a dual capsule. So basically, these are two capsules in one. So the rear side is a capsule and the front side is a capsule. Ah. That's very important if we are talking about switchable patterns, because uh, a pattern is created by mixing the two capsules with each other. And in the way you mix them together by changing the voltage to the electrodes, uh, then you form a, a cardioid or a hypercardioid or an omnidirection or a figure of eight. So that's done with a dual capsule like this one, right? Okay, very cool. Well, so um, let's see uh, some of this, you know, the microphones that you've built. This capsule is in a couple of your microphones, which are both yes. up for a tech award, I believe, at NAM this year. Is that right? Uh, well, one of them is up for a tech award and one of our headphones is up for a tech award. So... Um, so for the microphones, we have basically two large condenser recording mics, and you see them in the background there as well, but I, I'll again hold one up much closer to you. This is the 818, and you can see the capsule uh, flying there inside, which is also an important part. So it's suspended uh, basically on silicon rings so that you don't have uh, too much body noise coming to the capsule when you have it in a live event, for example, as an overhead to a drum set or bra section. So even if it's not mounted as in studios in, in a real shock mount uh, stand, so if it's only mounted like this, you still have 
the isolating from the body noise because the capsule is not mounted directly on the PCBA, but it's basically suspended, free floating in the cage. Ah, very cool. Could could you hold it in your hand? Would it be would it have low handling noise as well? Well, it would actually. It would. The handling noise is not that bad. Uh, I mean, of course, usually you don't do that with a large yeah. condenser mic, but you can. So the handling noise is not bad, but of course, directly singing into it, uh, it's very sensitive against popping, of course, because you don't have any, as in, in vocal mics, you usually have, you know, some foam in front of the capsule, mm -hmm. which you don't have in that microphone. It's, it's uh, pure, right? Yeah. So, uh, it really lets uh, the sound right through. So it probably has a, a lot of detail. It has a lot of detail. And what's also important that the cage is so large. And we even, it's also the first mic on the market uh, that has a diffuser in the bottom inside of the cage so that you don't even get reflections from the body of the of the microphone where the electronic sits it diffuses uh into the body of the mic and so you don't have as little reflections as you can have we call it a free field acoustic that's why it's called oc open condenser acoustics right oh, okay cool yeah it's always fascinating to me uh the level of design that goes into a microphone when you're putting this together, you know, these little details, things about like resonance of the materials and the spaces and just even the idea that a sound is reflecting off that teeny bottom of the, of the microphone makes a big difference. It does, you know, and, and you know, if there are physicians uh, among your, your, your viewers here or, you know, this little distance between the capsule and the bottom at uh, the bottom would be, I think the reflections approximately around six to seven K, yeah, six to 7,000 Hertz. And then of course it reflects back to the capsule. Um, if you don't have to deal with that, then it's much easier to tune it neutrally and to really capture the natural and linear sound to, to capture the, the, the instrument or the voc uh, vocals as they really sound without any reflections. Very cool. So now this microphone also has a bunch of switchable uh, patterns and other things on it. Why don't you give us a tour of what, how we can set up this mic? Plus, I know you guys have something extremely unique as far as remote control. Yeah, I think that's, uh, you know, uh, that's very important to us is uh, Austrian Audio is not a Me Too company. We, we always spend a lot of thoughts into how can we make the life of an engineer, of a musician easier, what's really usable. Uh, and we don't want to break with our old traditions. So yes, we wanted to make a pure analog, perfect sounding microphone. There is no digital in the audio path whatsoever. But uh, at the end of the day, times are changing. So there's a bit of a more modern workflow. And, and we think we captured it both in this mic. And I think that's why it also nominated for the Tech Awards. So if you look at the front of the mic, you have... Uh, all the usual switches, uh, you can put it on. Uh, uh, Maybe hold it up it? just a little bit higher for yeah. us. Figure of eight, you have a cardio pattern, you have a omnidirectional pattern, yeah? And then you have uh, hypercardiate. And what you have at the fifth position here is our secret. <laughs> What's uh, that? Yeah, I'll, I'll explain in a sec. Uh, Does it pick up sounds in the other room all of a sudden? Uh, yeah, yeah, surveillance mic. No, it's not. Um, no, what you know, the four other uh, positions are pretty clear and clean, and it's what you expect from a from a selectable pattern microphone. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, you have a attenuation pad minus ten minus oh, twenty dB. Hold it up a little bit higher. There you go. Great, perfect. You have the attenuation pad minus ten minus twenty dB. Uh, so if you get really loud signal, uh, the microphone can capture up to one hundred and fifty six dB. Wow. You, you can you can uh, record uh, a starting M uh, eighteen right at the rear of the engine, so <laughs> you know this uh, this would would work. And what you also of course have you have uh, uh, the high pass filter minus eighty and minus one hundred and twenty. So that's usual stuff you would expect, yep. and which is useful on stage, for example, if you want to limit some some body noise. You don't need below eighty hertz. You just cut it off, right? Now that's so far. An analog, uh, perfect microphone, switch it on with an XLR and it works as you would know a traditional studio recording mic. Yeah, and this would run on phantom power like a condenser, like we'd expect. Yes, on a 48 volt, it's a true condenser. So it's not a backplate, it's a true condenser on a 48 volt. Okay. And now we start with everything that's new on this. Because if you turn this little thing around, there is this little flap 
at the back. I hope you can see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you can open this one up. And what you see here is a five pin mini XLR plug. And that has two different functions. I show you the first one, which is really cute. I explained to you just a minute ago that how do you create a pattern? You create a pattern by switching uh, the two capsules to each other in a different, let's say, loudness. Mm -hmm. And you create the pattern, direction, omni, carded, whatever. Now, what I can do here, I have this cable in the box. And now, suddenly, I have two XLR plugs. Oh, wow. Now I have both the capsules let out of the microphone. And I can record both sides separately. And in the mix down, in the post-production, mix them together and decide after the event of the recording, if this should be more cardiac or maybe a little bit more omni, I mix the pattern after the event of the recording. Wow, so that's almost like an additional um, proximity effect controller. Yes, there is a, uh, there is a great uh, um, plugin available on our homepage. It's free for download, so to play around and, and test it out. Uh, it's the Polar Designer. Uh, yes, there is also a, a, a part where you can play with the proximity effect, but it's also the part where, you know, you record in a room, probably not in your own studio, you don't know how the room sounds, and you decide later how much of the room do you want to have in the recording. Do you make it a bit wider, a bit more omni, or do you make it more closer towards the source? And you just record both sides and you decide it later because you don't have the time in the recording process, for example. Very cool. Now, could you, for example, put two singers on either side of the microphone for some background harmonies and then decide later a little bit more about what the blend is of the two singers? Yes, you could, obviously. I mean, you always can put it on a figure of eight anyway, so you have both sides recorded. But then, of course, you can play a little bit with this. And I really recommend, you know, if you, if you try this mic out, play with this pattern designer, play with a polar designer, and uh, it is fascinating because what we do here is we are only changing the voltage uh, between the capsules. So we are not classically DSPing or EQing here, right? There's no EQing happening. We are just playing around with the directivity of the pickup of the microphone. And it changes completely. Or I'll give you an example. Um, you record a snare drum right? And you have the spillover of the hi-hat, obviously, coming from the rear. Yeah. And uh, there is a function in the, in the plugin where you can even get some help from the, from the plugin by looping a snare hit into your DAW. And then you say to the plugin, optimize the directivity of the snare drum in the plugin, and it optimizes and tries to cut away anything else that comes into the microphone. Wow. If you want to play that even stronger, you can then loop a hit of the hi-hat into the program and say, minimize that sound. Wow. And then cross uh, calculates those two uh, loops and you suddenly have almost no spill from the, from the hi-hat into your snare drum mic without having done any EQing. Wow, that's amazing. I, you I, don't I'm, disturb your snare sound with that. Right? Yeah, I'm very intrigued to hear what that sounds like. That's very cool. Yeah. Um, now, how would you describe the uh, the tonality of the capsules? Would you um, does is there sort of a presence peak or something like that, or you know, yeah. should we yeah. think about it in in terms of if we're familiar with the 414 from AKG? Are there any similarities or or not? Or do we not? Maybe we're not allowed to talk. Maybe you'll have to kill me if you tell me. <laughs> no, I don't have to kill you. It's just. Uh, you know, uh, and it's the last time I, I mentioned those three letters, AKG, because the 414, as you mentioned, there are, I don't know, six, seven, eight versions of this microphone. Right, right. But to which one do you compare? Uh, we are happy if you compare it to the ones of the 70s because mm -hmm. it had the brass capsule in there and it has this nice, smooth, high-end sound. Yes, there is a little bit of, an, uh, uh, of a boost uh, in the area of, of, of 6.5, 7 uh, kilohertz. Um, that gets you this openness, this 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 yeah. like uh, uh, transients uh, flying a little bit higher. Yeah. And uh, but the tricky thing is, um, if you then have uh, an imperfect capsule, and you add, for example, on the mixing desk, you want to have some more uh, treble. You you just uh, add some height, it becomes harsh. Right. And that's 
the, the good thing with this capsule is you, you can add as much height as you want. It never becomes harsh. Oh, that's it's great. Smooth, right? That's great news. That's, I think, the speciality about this capsule. Now, I have shown you this one, but as I, as I told you, this is a five pin uh, uh, mini XLR. And for a cable, it just would have been a three pin, but it's not. Because I think here's another very, very nice feature nobody has done before. This is this little piece, it's called OCR8. And this little piece is a Bluetooth dongle. And now you can plug the same, into the same slot, you can plug this Bluetooth dongle. And uh, I want to emphasize, again, we are not digital in the audio path at all. This is just a little remote control. Uh, and with this remote control, I, you know, it's not now plugged in. It needs, of course, the 48 volts to operate, right? Right, but right, right. I have it in my hand, so I'm, I don't have the voltage right here. But what this does now, and for all the skeptical people here in the room and in, and in front of the TVs, don't worry, you have to pair it by entering the serial number of the dongle, which is a 10-digit number, to pair to your mobile device. Why? Because you might have funny people in the audience seeing the microphone and say, oh, there is a Bluetooth dongle. I'll try what I can change there. Right? So <laughs> We're not uh, that smart. We're not that smart. So No, you can't because you had to pair it with a serial number. So there is absolute security on that. Okay, so now what does that do? That allows us with a phone to change the settings on the microphone, like the pickup pattern and the and the low cut and the pad well, and all that? All that, yes. So what you had in early studio days with these large breakout boxes and uh, one centimeter thick cables coming uh, from the recording room, uh, yes, you can now change all of that on your mobile device. So this is also a free of charge app that's available for all Android and iOS devices. And, um, but I think there's more to that. And I want to give you a very brief overview of that. Of course you can, as I showed you here before on the mic, you can change between cardioid, hypercardioid, omni, and a figure of eight, yeah. right? Yeah. That would be four different patterns on a microphone. And that's what you usually get. Maybe you get a fifth one on a microphone. And that's usually what people call a multi-pattern microphone. Yeah. Now I dare to say, that's not a multi-pattern microphone. This AC, uh, OC818 is because if you have a look now here and I try to find it, with this slider, you can now seamlessly in 254 steps change the pattern to whatever you want it to be from Omni to very wide cardiac to going to a super cardiac and going wow. on to a figure of eight. Well, wow, it's like it's like watching bubbles form. <laughs> but so, you know what's very cool about this too is um, rock stars. If you're just sort of if you're even new to the idea of pickup patterns on a microphone, you could just download this free app and just start playing with it just to experience what do pickup patterns, what the different ones, what do they look like, how do the how does it work, you know, which what direction. Now, does this talk about the um, frequency response of different pickup patterns too, or is that is that a little bit more in depth? Uh, it doesn't in the app. It okay. does not. It does and do what is the, the name of the app? How, if we want to go download the app right now, what is it called again? Polar Pilot. Polar Pilot. Okay. Yeah. We'll it's put the, a link to that in the in the the notes for the video, Rockstar. Yeah, you can download it uh, on you know the Play Store or the App Store or, of course, the plugin I mentioned before. You can download from our web page. Great. The cool thing on here is not only that you have now 254 different patterns you can choose from. But you can, of course, also remote control the attenuation pad and the high pass filter. And if you can see the very down bar here. Yeah, what's that down there? This are the last 60 seconds of your input signal to the microphone. So you can remotely watch if microphone clips. And if it clips, you see a red bar coming up. And then you can place the attenuation pad, for example, without wow. going to the mic. Wow, no. so if you missed it, if you missed a clip, oh, right, because you wouldn't see that. We're used to seeing a clip in Pro Tools or something like that, but we've never seen a clip on the mic itself. So this is the first time we've ever actually seen what's going on at the at the capsule head. Well, there are some mics that have, for example, a clip led that lights, but if it's on stage and you're or in, this, in the recording room and you are somewhere else, you don't see that at all. 
with that, you don't only see it in the moment of clipping, but you can check the last minute if there are any clipping happened, right? Wow, that's that's pretty amazing. That's very cool. And uh, and and what and and that's the final one I'll I'll say to this uh, uh, Bluetooth dongle and to this app. Uh, but it's a cool thing. For example, if you use the OC818 in a in a in a live tour, let's say a trombone player who uh, uses two edges, right? So obviously trombone pretty loud he needs an attenuation pad minus 10 maybe even minus 20 db and as the wedges are to the left and to the right you want a pattern that picks up as little as possible from these two directions right so you can create this with that tool you already fix the attenuation pad and probably a high cut whatever at 80 hertz and then and there we come to our secret position even if you <laughs> unplug that thing it's now stored on the fifth position and you have created your own pattern, which you can always recall without any electronic tool, but mechanically on the mic. Oh, so I see. So it's stored into the fifth position. So if we, yes. if we move the switch over and then put it back on five, we get right back to that setting. Exactly. So if you're on tour and you write the name of the musician on that, it's always his mic you have on the fifth position, his designed for his tour designed pattern and you always can just use it there without using the remote without using any plugin you just have stored it in the mic that's cool so here's where i could see that being really helpful rock stars is um there's many times where we set up a mic in the studio and i might go out and and look at it and be like oh i forgot to do the low pass or did you are you you've got the wrong uh, pickup pattern set up for the mic and I might not know it but knowing that there might be a favorite use like let's say I was always going to use these for my drum overheads or something like that knowing that that fifth position was the exact right setting that I wanted and that it was always set there that would be pretty huge that would be great I think it's pretty useful if ex exactly as you describe it there Lee. and so uh, for live events especially you know uh, but think of other applications, you know, if you are, um, I don't know, if you're in a recording situation, live recording situation, you use it as a, as overhead, for example, or if you use it as probably even a, a larger band stereo mic, right? And yeah. you would have a step ladder to change anything if you, if you think, you know, it's too much of the re reverend room in there. Uh, now you don't, you just uh, switch the microphone from your remote uh, app, um, mobile app. And, uh, and you can store as many mics as you want in the app. So you can, uh, you know, if you have 10 mics up there, you just recall the mic you want to change and you change it uh, from your mobile app. Uh, or if you are doing a live recording or there is somebody videotaping your, your gig, right? Uh, and uh, you don't want to run into the picture. So you can, uh, from the monitor position, you can change all the settings on the stage. So there are a lot of, or you're recording in the studio and you know, the singer is really on it and, and is in the mood and, and you think, ah, I should try a different pattern. You would open the door, stop him singing, change the pattern, go out, all the, the situation is gone. Now you stay at the mixing uh, desk and just experiment a little bit. What is the right pattern for this guy or the girl or whatever, you know? Yeah, that's and, perfect. It's like, a, it's a digital assistant. In the yeah. studio now, can it make coffee for me and bring me a coffee to the control room also? Yes, that would but be... without milk and sugar. Sorry, without milk and sugar. All right, <laughs> right on. Well, very cool. So that is the um, that is. Uh, let's make sure we get the model name on that. That's the C. No, the C O C eight one eight. O C eight one eight. Okay, great. Yeah. And then now we also have the O C one eight, which is right next to it over there, right? Yeah, this is this one. Uh, so this one is all. Uh, very uh, often underestimated because uh, it has the same capsule in there. It's the same uh, ceramic capsule in there, but it's not a dual capsule. So this is not a selectable pattern microphone. Oops, now the camera goes. Oh, there wild. we go. Now we can see it. Yeah, that's great. So uh, this black colored one here is uh, a straightforward uh, cardiac pattern recording mic. It has the same audio quality. It has the same attenuation pads. It has the same... Uh, uh, sound pressure capability of uh, 156 dB. Um, the only thing is it has no second output and it's just a pure cardioid microphone. The great stuff here is, as I told you before, as we manage to get the production in such close limits, uh, at the end of the day, you could stereo match these two. 
Wow. That's the silver cool. one on a cardiac position, then these two are within plus minus half a, db, half a db. So you could even stereo match one of this and one of this. Or you can buy one microphone. And if the budget's coming along and you can afford a second one, you don't need to think of, oh, now they are not stereo matched now and I need to order a stereo matched pair because we manage to output the sensitivity plus minus half a dB. And that's, I think, even better than you would buy a stereo matched pair. Usually yeah. you get plus minus one dB. Well, that's very cool. That's handy. Um, so now let's ask the big, the big question everybody wants to know. What, should, uh, what budget should we have? If, what's the price point on some of these mics? Are we allowed to talk about that? Is there anything the rock stars should know about how much they should save up for, uh, for each of these mics? Yeah, the, the OC818 uh, sells for $1190. Uh, and I want to mention they are all handmade in Vienna, right? So all of these parts, this all uh, the grills, the, the PCPAs, we do the membranes even ourselves here in-house. Then we made out of the membranes, the capsules. So these are handcrafted and tested and every unit leaves tested the house here in Vienna. And yes, it's uh, 1190 for, for the 818. Uh huh, and it's seven ninety uh, for the uh, pure cardiac uh, OC eighteen. Okay, great. Now you're talking about the hand build. I remember uh, watching a video on your site. There was even a a, um, a woman who's been responsible for every single one of these capsules. So it's like she is the the ultimate um, gatekeeper on whether the capsule is done perfectly, like you would expect. So very cool. That's correct. And uh, and again, you know that there comes the experience in place. Uh, she has done this for more than 30 years, even uh, wow. at the, the other company before. And, uh, you know, it sounds like voodoo a little bit, but it is very sophisticated to put a capsule like that together. Uh, and, and even though we have the, you know, most expensive measurement tools and measurement rooms and anechoic chambers and, and, there are good days and bad days for the yield. It's and even if you have you know uh, magnetic shielding hand uh, uh, cliffs and demagnetizing and everything and the floor and clean room, and some t some days, I don't know somebody doesn't like the uh, I don't know the 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 day for making perfect capsules. So we just stop, you know. We have uh, to, to it, it is very sophisticated. It's not as, as easy forward, straightforward as it sounds. Yeah, it's expertise. It's real craftsmanship. So that's very cool. All right. Now, you guys are also making more than microphones. You have got a couple of headphones on stands, it looks like, back there. Sure. Tell us about your headphones. Yeah. I mean, basically, it's two models, and it's basically built on a platform. So I'll take them both with me. And what made you want to go into headphones? What made you, is it is there a, is it logical that if you know how to make a microphone you would you would know how to make a, a headphone as well? Um, no, that's not actually not a, a logical uh, consequence. But uh, yes, if you understand electromagnetics and if you understand transducers, because uh, you know, <laughs> a funny anecdote. I was uh, it must have been twenty years ago, eighteen years ago. I was uh, in the United States, I was uh, near California, and incidentally, it was on the 4th of July, I was walking to a park, and there were a lot of parties and tents and, and, and young DJs making music, and, and at that time, I was already into the mic and headphone business, and, uh, <laughs> and there was a, a DJ making music, and he had one of these headphones, uh, you know, the typical way as they do it. Yeah, uh, like this one on. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and he made his uh, his mix. And then suddenly he unplugged the headphone from the headphone plug, plugged it into the microphone plug and announced something via the headphones. <laughs> yeah, I think we did that as a kid, too. Like if you didn't have a mic, it's like, oh, just use the headphones backwards. It's great. It works in a way, you know, but, uh, you know, as good as it can. So to answer your question, yes, of course, there is something together going with, uh, uh, you know, uh, drivers, uh, electromagnetic uh, uh, design. But actually, you know, um, our previous company where we all were was uh, pretty well famous for for making headphones as well. You know, I mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, remember the 240s? Oh, yeah. uh, I have it. That was my first pair of headphones, the 240Ms. I remember them. Yeah, I Still mean, so, so logically, we had this expertise in-house, and we said we can't miss that part. 
And well, so we let's, created let's, two. Yeah, let's get it up on the camera. We want to look at those guys too. So oh. yeah, keep telling us about that. But now you have two different ones. Yeah. And I, um, one of the differences I think is the way that it sits on your ear, right? Exactly. This one is an over the ear. So it's a little bit of a larger uh, ear cup. I turn it this way around because then I can uh, show you. Um, and the other one is the small brother, which is an on ear. So if I put it like that, you can see there is the difference, the on ear and the over ear. Right. So one but just sits right on top. Yeah. It sits on top of your ear or over the ear. I mean, there's different applications for each one. You know, these on ears would be rather used by DJs. And, and, and if you have to get it fast off your ear and on your ear, uh, and, and it's uh, even more, uh, you see, the mechanics is pretty solid, but you can fold it very, very small. Uh, and, and so it's portable as well. So oh, you can. Cool. Yeah. Maybe hold fold. it up just a little bit. There you go. Great. Yeah, you fold it and you twist it. And so it goes very, very flat. Yeah. And it, of course, this works back. with the large ones as well. So you can also twist the ear cups here. You can also fold it as, as much as you want. Um, I mean, what's, what's really important to mention? I think are two things. And as much as you wish, uh, being the creator of headphones, that the first answer, if you ask, what's the most important thing on a headphone? Uh, and you would expect, well, great sound, right? But the first answer you get is most of the time that they're comfortable. Yeah. Yeah, cause yeah because when you wear you them wear, for a while. As a professional, you wear them three hours, four hours, six hours, and they must not hurt you. And we put a lot of efforts in that. I mean, only if you see, you know, the, the head cushion that is thinner on the top, but wider at the, the sides. Why? Because as babies, we grow together here on yeah. the head. <laughs> and that gives you pain if you have a pressure on there. Yeah. But that's considered in these head cushions. It's all very slow retaining memory foam. So it very, very well fits to years. The clamping force, there is exactly rules how much it may be but it may be the same on a large head and on a small head. So ah. there is a lot of technology going into a headphone. Bear in mind, a headphone like this can have as much as 120 pieces. Yeah. Wow. So, and I think what's also important for all you pros out there, they are rugged. You can put them into your back and you can twist them as much as you want. Yeah, that's a big deal. Now, the other thing I, I know from having a studio, sometimes when you have headphones around that headphones, eventually headphones do get broken, you know, musicians treat them roughly and everything like that. Will we if we decide we want to um, get these uh, and what are the model numbers again? It's the the, it's the high X 55 and the 55, high X 50. Right? Yeah. Why high X? Because it stands for high excursion. We don't play the game with larger and larger membranes. I told you with the microphone before. The larger membrane gets, the slower it gets. Uh, and also, the same here with a, with a membrane of a driver. It has to work as a piston. If you make it too large, it moves like this ah. and not like this, right? So we invented a complete new driver generation. It's a proprietary driver that is only 44 millimeters uh, large, but it has a double size ring magnet like a large loudspeaker driver and it moves double the way up and down. So the excursion is much higher. It moves the same amount of air, but more precise and much quicker. So these play down to five hertz, five hertz to 20 wow. kilohertz, right? Wow, so we can really check bass on those things. Yeah, you can. We can check our mixes. Definitely, definitely. Very cool, very cool. And now if, um, if uh, we are using these for the musicians in the in the room and um, and they get broken is it easy for us to get individual parts if we want to re have to do some rebuilding or any of that uh frankly yes it is and uh, but honestly i think you hardly can break them other than the cable and they're of course ex exchangeable right you can Great. just change the cable it's a bayonet uh, uh, uh mini jack which you can easily change you can change uh the the ear cushions at any time you can even change the head cushion. Yeah. Oh, wow, that's that's great. That's handy. And and basically all the rest. And I think that's the big big difference to maybe lower cost headphones. It's all metal. Every piece on that. The hinge uh, bars, okay. aluminium. The axis, aluminium, steel, steel band. So you have no plastic parts that break. 
Oh, that's great. That's awesome, right? man. You, 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 it, I can't imagine what you need to do to break it mechanically, <laughs> but you can, of course, outwear it. So, you know, cushions get tired. Yeah. Uh, the leather gets old, but you can exchange these parts yourself in, in a minute. That's great. Well, that's fantastic, Martin. Thank you for showing us around. Um, let the rock stars know what, uh, what, what's the price point on headphones if they want to consider getting these too. Uh, two ninety nine and three twenty nine. Okay, great, awesome. In dollars, it's all in dollars, right? Okay, great. And um, and again, Rockstars, those high X fifty fives would uh, sound like they'd be great mixing headphones for the control room. Something really awesome for checking your mixes on, or just learning how to mix on, a hundred percent. You know, so very cool, Martin. Where should people go? Uh, where do you want them to go to learn more about you guys, or if they just want to go buy a microphone or a pair of headphones? Well, I think to learn more about us, uh, very easy, www.austrian.audio. That's our website. And uh, there you can find us. Uh, and I, I'm sure you can uh, write it into your uh, into your broadcast. Uh, so it's yeah. www.austrian.audio. Uh, that's our website. And of course, you can find us on Twitter, on uh, uh, LinkedIn, on uh, uh, Facebook, uh, on the Austrian Audio. And you know, if you want to to get you one of these units and test it, try it out. Um, we are all with uh, all large dealerships. We are. Uh, um, can I mention them? Uh, sure. Are, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're available everywhere. It sounds like, right? Yeah, we are with Sweetwater, with uh, all guitar centers. We are in uh, Vintage King. Uh, you know, uh, so all the guys who who, who deal great. with uh, great audio products. Yeah. Great. Well, uh, Martin, thanks so much for joining us here. I think um, I feel like the first time I heard about you guys, too, was through my friend Mark Rubel over at Blackbird uh, yeah. Studios and Blackbird Academy. Yeah, shoot out there in the Blackbird Studios. Oh, that's great. That's very cool. Well, maybe you can share some links with us if people want to go and listen to examples of this. We can put a link in there, too. But thanks for being here. Thanks for joining us for a little virtual NAM action. And um, thank, you, thank you very much for having me. It was a really great pleasure talking to you. And then thanks for all the rock stars out there. Keep rocking. Uh, it's exactly you who keep us alive and keep the music business alive. And it's great to have you. Yeah, thanks. And rock stars, remember to hit the subscribe button and the like button if you enjoyed this video so you don't miss any more videos from us. And if you're looking for any free mix training, check out Mix Master Bundle. That's my free mixing course using free and stock plugins in your DAW. Martin, great to meet you. And um, also, we'll give a shout out to Martina over at Music Marcom who helped connect us. Thanks very much, Martina. Thanks, Martina. See you guys in the next video. Cheers. Thank you. Bye bye.